Hello everyone, David here. I wanted to record a series of tutorials about how to get VR content onto YouTube. This is going to be part one of a series, and in today's episode, aimed mostly at beginners, we're going to talk about how to get your video recorded into the right format, how to get it processed correctly for virtual reality, and then how to get it uploaded to the platform. And then you should have a video that's ready to view in a VR headset. Okay, let's go. Well, the first thing we need to do is actually record some footage. And to do that, you'll need a specialized either 180 or 360 camera. Um, you could use something like this, which is the Views Plus, which is a stereoscopic 360 degree camera, um, or the Mi Sphere, which is a monoscopic 360 degree camera. You get a sense of depth with this, and it looks kind of more flat with this, but you can look in any direction. Alternatively, you could use a VR 180 camera, um, which has got stereoscopic view. So something like the Views XR will shoot in VR 180, you get a sense of depth because it shoots um, video for each eye, but it only faces forward. You can also convert this one into shooting 360 if you want, so it kind of does both. Um, if you want a little explanation on why you need a camera like this, let's go back to home Dave and he can talk about field of view. Field of view refers to how wide angle a camera is. Um, now, in this action camera's case, it captures about the front 90 degrees horizontal field of view. And that's just not enough for virtual reality because people are going to want to turn their heads um, and, and in their peripheral vision, they'll see more than that front 90 degrees. Now, it will be limited by the headset they're using as well, but once they've turned their head in a little bit, they're going to see just kind of black nothingness if you didn't record it with a wide enough camera. Um, so that's why you can't really turn action camera footage into virtual reality footage. You need a specialized 360 degree camera or 180 at least to get good VR video. If you shoot in 360, then your virtual reality viewers will be able to look in any direction. Or if you turn it into a more conventional non-virtual reality video, you'll be able to track your target later in post-production. Or you could turn it into a tiny planet effect like this. Alternatively, you could shoot in 180, which means you only capture the forward half of what the camera is seeing. Now, this might sound like a disadvantage over 360, um, but bear in mind that most virtual reality viewers don't really spend a lot of time looking behind themselves. So you might as well save that time processing all of that video information behind the viewer. And also it means that as a director, you can hide behind the camera out of shot quite conveniently. Okay, I think we've got all our video recorded now, so let's take it home for processing and then upload. Okay, step two, processing. Uh, we've come home and we have a whole load of video and images as well um, on our camera in its own proprietary format. So first of all, we want to copy the images and video onto our hard drive and you will want to open up your um, bundled software, whatever came with the camera, um, and then copy the images onto your hard drive or onto a backup drive or whatever you use to work from. And that's usually called import or something like that. Um, so we'll go through the process of just copying them. I've already done that. And the next step is to actually convert them into a common format used for VR. So if we open up one of these images, um, I can see on the right here, this is a preview of what I want to get out. Um, and uh, this is in VR 180 format side by side. Um, I'm actually going to work on a 360 video first, uh, this one. Uh, so, as you can see, it's quite warped, and that's because I was um, holding the camera at an angle. So, I'm just going to apply horizon stabilization, which helps a bit, but it's still warped. So, I can fix that in Premiere Pro later, but um, that's going to be a topic of a future video. Um, so, we want it in this output format, which is called an equirect or equirectangular. Um, and you may have heard of this term if you uh, know anything about maps because the map of the world, which takes a sphere, um, is in rectangular format in its most sort of classical traditional view. And we're doing exactly the same thing here. We've got spherical video that we want to turn into a rectangle, an equirect. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the output formats for 360 and 180 video, uh, including monoscopic and stereoscopic, right now. There are a few different formats to use for stereoscopic video. 
Um, one of the most commonly used ones is over, under, or top, bottom video. And that's when you have one strip of video that gets fed to the left eye, and then another strip of video underneath it that gets fed to the right eye. Um, typically, that's more commonly used for 360 degree stereo, because then you get uh, a 360 by 180 degree video, and then another one underneath, and you end up with something quite square as an output. Um, for 180 degree stereoscopic video, I'd recommend side by side because then you get a 180 by 180 degree video which is square and then another one which is square next to it so you get a nice 2 by 1 aspect ratio. That's generally a bit easier to handle than a 1 by 2 video but technically it should still work. So the cheat sheet is if you're doing 360 degree stereo go for over under top bottom, 180 degree stereo go side by side. And if you're doing monoscopic content, um, it kind of doesn't matter. Just go with whatever comes out of the camera. Um, typically a nice sort of two by one aspect ratio if you're doing 360 degrees by 180 degrees, because then you get square pixels. If you're just doing 180 by 180, you should get a square video out of it. Okay, so now we're ready to get this video into Equirect format. So we are going to go to Render. Um, I'm going to keep it at the maximum resolution because you really do want the highest resolution when you're working in VR video. Um, encoding H.264 compression is very good. H.265 is also good. ProRes is um, even better, but very high file size. So probably um, not what most people want to use. Um, you can set a really high uh, bit rate if you want, like 120 megabits per second, um, but I tend to keep it at auto, um, and we want equirectangular. It is possible to do it with a cube map projection, but um, it gets a bit more complicated, so I'm going to keep it in equirect for now. We want to pick um, a place where we're going to remember where we put it, uh, and then give it a name. I just use the same name as the source coming out of the camera. Um, I do put all of my rendered videos into a subfolder called rendered, and keep them all together, so I know everything that I'm likely to then put into Premiere Pro later if I were to do future processing. Uh, that's it, and then you hit render and we're ready to move on to the next step. If you have a different brand of camera, then the software is going to be different. You usually want to use the software that came bundled with the camera because it's going to be the right one to convert that proprietary format into the common one, the Equirect. Um, so uh, in the case of the Mi Sphere camera, for example, you get software that looks like this. This is a, a desktop app that you can download for free. Um, and then uh, the process is essentially the same. You want to go and open your file, um, go and pick the video, um, and then export it. Uh, again, I would put it in a folder called rendered somewhere near the source video. Um, I like to keep things as MPEG-4 so that they will work better in Premiere. Um, and then you want to go over to export and then exactly the same thing happens. You get an output video that's ready for the next step of the process. If you have an Insta360 ONE X or a GoPro Fusion, um, you are gonna use software from those companies instead for this step. But the essential process remains the same. Now it's time for the third and perhaps optional step of adding metadata. Um, we need to tell YouTube what kind of format uh, the video is that we're uploading, whether it's monoscopic, stereoscopic, 180 or 360 or something else. Um, this is the step in which we add metadata. If you're using Premiere Pro, uh, you won't need to do this because it can add the metadata for you when you export. Um, if you're using Views VR Studio or the MeSphere app, they, they nowadays add the metadata as well, um, and possibly other software does as well. But if you just want to check the metadata or overwrite it for whatever reason, here's how you do that. Um, first of all, uh, you will go to prepare for publishing um, and then go and find your file. Uh, I'm gonna do a 180 example first. So this file is stereoscopic 180. Um, it tells me there's already metadata in there, um, but that's fine, I'm going to make uh, a copy of this file with metadata from the Google VR 180 cre creator instead. Uh, so this is my file. This is indeed um, what it looks like. Um, with this software, you can see what it looks like um, in a normal side-by-side -side format, or you can turn on the mono preview. This is what people will see if they just open up your video in a phone or on their PC. Um, it is indeed left-right format, not top-bottom. Uh, and it's 180 degrees, uh, horizontal and vertical field of view. Um, so when you're ready um, to make a new copy of this file with the metadata added from this tool, uh, you go to export, 
and it creates a file alongside it called the exactly the same file name but with injected um, and export that. It'll be very quick because it's just copying the video data and adding the metadata at the start. Um, and then that file is ready to upload to YouTube. I like doing it this way because Google owns the YouTube platform and Google makes this tool. So you can be pretty confident that the metadata that this program injects is gonna be right for YouTube. If you're working on a 360 video, um, whether it's monoscopic or stereoscopic, you can't use the VR180 tool. You have to use the Spatial Media Metadata Injector, um, which is supplied by YouTube. I'll give you the links to all of these tools uh, in the description of the video, by the way. Um, and uh, this is a totally different looking tool, um, but it works in kind of the same way. Uh, you go and open your video file. Uh, I'm gonna grab this one, which I know is a 360 degree monoscopic video. Open that up, um, it knows already that it has the right metadata. So it knows it's spherical 360 and it knows it's not stereoscopic. So that tick box is not ticked. Um, if you needed to change these settings, now is when you would do it. Um, and then you would save the file by injecting metadata. And again, it's very fast because it just makes a copy, but with the right metadata right at the start of the file. And then that video is ready to upload. Fortunately, uh, this time I didn't actually need to change any of the metadata, but if you had a video that came out of a different piece of software, you would need to do this step. Of course, if you're doing the tiny planet thing, then that isn't virtual reality. So uh, you actually won't bother with any of this um, metadata stuff. You'll just make your video in Premiere and then actually warp it into a tiny planet and then export a traditional non-virtual reality video for YouTube or whatever. Um, so I may cover that in a future video, but uh, that's not VR. So um, VR is, is when it's immersive and you can look in any direction, but tiny planet video is where it's specifically warped into a traditional video but it just has that cool effect. Okay, now we're ready for the easiest and perhaps the most fun step of all, just uploading your finished video to YouTube. So um, grab the file you want. Uh, it's probably one of these injected files. Uh, drag it into YouTube and it will upload. Um, quick recap of all of these steps. Number one is record your footage with the camera. Number two, process it into eco-rectangular format. Number three, inject the metadata, and then finally upload to YouTube. Okay, now you've got your video processed and uploaded in the right format. Uh, you just need to wait a short while for YouTube to process the video, and then it should be ready to view. So uh, grab your favorite VR headset. I've got the Oculus Go here, which um, I think is a great little headset and great value for money. Um, and uh, it has a YouTube app. So you can go and view YouTube videos at quite high resolution. Now it does usually stream the video, so you have to have a good internet connection to view them in their best quality, or find a way to download them and then view them in the gallery later. Okay, I hope this video was useful. If it was, then please hit the like button and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.